In this episode, a hungry black bear viciously attacks a young couple who are celebrating their fourth wedding anniversary. He bravely climbs on the back of the bear when it attacks his wife and enters into a life, and enters into a life, and death struggle with him to protect her. Click the like and subscribe buttons right now. It was a terrible bear attack on Jacqueline Perry and Mark Jordan. Outdoor enthusiasts Mark Jordan and Jacqueline Perry celebrated their fourth wedding anniversary. They both decided to celebrate this event by camping for two weeks in the Canadian Provincial Park Lake Miss Ivy. The park area of 100,000 hectares provides an amazing outdoor experience. Canoeing, trekking, boating, fishing and camping are all popular pastimes. There are over a hundred different types of campsites, many of which can only be reached by boat. You're really on your own when you pitch your tent at Miss Lake and Ivy Park. It can be a magical encounter, but it can also be fatal. It was 80 kilometers north of Chapo, Ontario in September 2005. Mark and Jacqueline parked their car in Lake Missing, Ivy Provincial Park, together. They dropped their two-person kayak into the river after lifting it from the roof of their car. They logged in after they uploaded it. They both enjoyed the peace and quiet of the countryside. They bathed in the lake and then relaxed by the roaring fire. So far, the vacation has been quite exciting. They both needed a break. The next morning, they woke up with the first rays of the sun stretching and yawning. Mark unzipped the tent and lit a fire. He was able to rekindle it using a few embers. To boil over an open fire, he took some water from the lake. Before the next tent camp, they had a long way to row, so Jacqueline went in search of wood to keep the fire going. Thus, they decided to have a hearty breakfast and stock up on plenty of tea in flasks. Jacqueline heard a distinct crackling of a branch as she gathered firewood in an armful. When she froze, she immediately began to look around. Mark responded when she called out to him, confirming that he was still sitting by the fire and could not see anything. Jacqueline continued to gather firewood from the trees. She returned with an armful to the fire before returning for more. I'm going back to the same place. When she was abruptly knocked to the ground, Jack Woon bent down to pick up more firewood. She didn't have time to react as the blow was so sudden and strong. When she fell to the ground screaming, she screamed. Jacques and Gus watched as the black bear tied her up and viciously attacked her face as she was knocked to the ground and knocked the breath out of her lungs. She could feel the bear's claws digging deep into her flesh. She instantly screamed in response to the bear's teeth closing on her face. Mark was there. As soon as the bear tried to drag Jacqueline further into the forest, he pulled his Swiss Army knife out of his pocket and jumped on the animal. Mark clung to the bear, wrapped his arms around his neck, and stabbed him several times with the thin blade of his penknife. But despite his frantic movements, the bear managed to knock Mark off his back and knock him to the ground. The attack started so fast and with such force, the couple was caught off guard. The bear was huge in both size and weight. When Mark plunged his knife into its flesh, it barely reacted. The bear seemed unstoppable because he was so focused on Jacqueline. He continued to attack Jacqueline in a rage. She was caught in his jaw. Mark jumped up and rushed at the beast again. He cut the bear's neck with a knife after stabbing him in the face several times. Releasing Jacqueline, the bear raced off into the forest. Mark saw the back of the bear making its way through fallen tree branches before it disappeared. Jacqueline was in Mark's arms. She was really bleeding. Although he made an effort to stop the bleeding, she had so many wounds that he lost hope. He picked her up and put her in the bottom of their kayak after he took her there. He began to row hurriedly across the sea. He was constantly crying out for help. Jacqueline's sobs stopped. It was hard for her to breathe, so she closed her eyes. Mark urged her to persevere. He told her to stay conscious. 
With every passing minute, he frantically scanned the coastline in search of someone who could help. He was getting more and more insane. Despite the fact that Jacqueline was rapidly losing strength, Mark continued to row a canoe in the direction of the next tent camp in the hope of meeting someone there. He himself was seriously injured. There were a lot of nerves on his wrists and hands, which the bear cut. When he struggled with her, trying to save his wife, she bit him, leaving stab wounds. When he strained with each stroke of the paddle, blood flowed down his body from deep wounds on his hands. Mark climbed onto the board, and they all swam together for help. In the distance, they saw a pontoon with two people inside. Surprisingly, Mark stopped them. The first was a doctor from North Carolina, and the second was an off-duty police officer. While the boat was racing across the ocean, the doctor made a heroic attempt to save Jacqueline. He stopped the bleeding and started Kipur, but it was too late. For Jacqueline, help came too late. Before they could get her to the park office, which was six miles away, she tragically died from her injuries two hours after the attack. Mark was taken out of the wilderness to Sudbury Regional Hospital. The operation was necessary because of his injuries. He received 300 stitches and was given an antibiotic to prevent infection. In the hospital, he gradually recovered. His wounds healed, but his heart was torn apart. He received the Medal of Valor in recognition of his valiant efforts. Mark, however, lacked the courage. He believed he could have done better. He would like to have more knowledge about black bears and their habits. When asked about the fatal events, bear experts pointed out that the bear was not just violent, he was also a predator. From afar, he spotted Jacqueline and Mark and fixed their location. The bear chased Jacqueline after he saw her wandering alone in the woods. Up until the right moment to strike, everything was quiet and secretive. When Mark fought the bear, he believed that hitting him with a pent knife would be enough to make him run away. Instead, he continued to attack Jacqueline, inflicting fatal injuries on her. They were looking for nearby vacationers to issue a warning, but it was unclear how many people were in the area as they were not required to do so. Black bear attacks were very rare in Ontario. Since 1978, only four black bear-related deaths have been recorded. Black bears are especially dangerous when they are malnourished because they can attack people from hunger. Simply put, Jacqueline was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The bear was not afraid of her. She did not encroach on either the mother bear or her cubs. She had just finished gathering firewood. There was nothing she could have done to prevent the male bear from approaching her as soon as he started chasing her. She had no choice but to wait for her tragic terminal stage of the disease. 